Alleluia Ministries International is a Bible-believing and Christ-centered church. We believe Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. His power is still at work in the church today, just as it was in the time of the Bible. We are AMI. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory be to God. Please be seated if you can. I read with you. Second book of Kings, chapter 4. I read verse 21 and 22. I bring you in a story ongoing. And I pray that today God may inspire you through these scriptures. The Bible says she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. Shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, please, send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the men of God and come back. This is one of those remarkable stories of faith and the power of God displayed. The power of God is not myth. God is not powerless. Amen. God is powerful. Hallelujah. You can experience the power of God. You should desire to experience the power of God every day of your life. I receive it. May I please submit to you, sons and daughters of God, that there are many powers in the visible world and many powers in the invisible world. Everywhere you go, every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you come across invisible powers, powers that you cannot detect with your naked eyes, but they are working for or against you. It is therefore prudent to make sure that you are connected and aligned properly with the right power that will cause every other diabolical and unbecoming powers out there to bow Amen. on your path. Life is like a jungle. Life is eat or be eaten. Many who are supposed to still be here are not here. Because if you are not careful, the enemy will move you. That's right. You must always know it. The story is a story of a woman. The Bible says she was married to a man. She lived in a place known as Shunem. They called her the Shunammite woman. She had no child. It is seen through her dealings that this woman was a godly woman. Godly people do certain things that tells you who they are. Mm. Hear me. Only a good tree gives good fruits. There are people who do good not because they are naive. They do good not because they do not know what they are doing. They do good because it is their nature. Yes. This woman, it is seen that she was a good woman. Good people do not stop being good. It is true that we live in a world that is full of evil. Do not change who you are based on people. That's right. I receive this word. It is said one day, a man was found trying to help a scorpion. A scorpion in trouble, a scorpion literally drowning. And every time he attempted to help the scorpion, the scorpion tried to bite him. And he will always be careful and move his fingers right on time. And kept on trying until finally, after many attempts, he saved the life of the scorpion. A scorpion that left to the bush 
without looking back and saying bye or thanks. You know the kind of people. Mm. They are entitled. No matter what you do, it's never enough. You can polish the shoes, it's never enough. They ask this man and say, why did you embark on a helping the scorpion? A scorpion that tried to hurt you repeatedly. He said, trying to do what I was doing to the scorpion is my nature. And the scorpion trying to do evil to me was his nature. That's right. I will not change my nature because he's a scorpion. Hallelujah. I remain good. Glory to Jesus. The Shunammite woman was an outstanding woman because of her heart and because of the alignment of her spirit. The Bible says, as the man of God, Elisha will pass by the city where she was. This woman will approach the man of God with kindness and do good to this man. It was a soul. That she kept on doing the same thing again and again. Hear me. Result does not come always because you have done once something good. Result requires you to keep on doing that thing again and again. That's right. She did so. And probably in the course of her doing assignment, ministering to the men of God, she came to an insight blessed is a man who has that insight blessed is a man a woman who gets in that place where your spirit shows you and you can see it with no complication mm. she had an insight and called her husband and said i perceive that this is a holy man of god he said i perceive i have an insight Something inside me tells me that this man is not a common man. This man is holy unto God. This man is a sanctified man unto God. He may eat my food. He may take a nap under the tree. I may even hear him snow. But something within me tells me that this man is not an ordinary man. Why did I say blessed is a man who gets to this revelation? It is only as you get to perceive who is set by God for you that you will tap into what God set for you. I because the only reason why God set somebody in your life is so that he may be an instrument through which he will take you to the next level. May I please... Emphasize to the fact that every time God want to bless you, he will anoint somebody. Every time the enemy gets ready to destroy you, he will send you somebody. So the nature of people around you is a clear indication of what is taking place in the spiritual realm. Amen. If you read the scripture carefully, you will hear Jesus Christ question his own disciples. He said, what do men say that I am? Yes. He wanted to know how many of them have the insight of who I am. Because I may be Jesus carrying the glory of God and be next door. If they do not know who I am, they will miss the miracle that I bring to them. So who do men say that I am? They went on saying whatever they had to say. Some says, some says. And he stopped them and said, I hear that. And you, who do you say that I am? Great calamity is not just because there is a tsunami out there. Great calamity is that you are close, but you do not know you are. Oh, Jesus. Great calamity mm. is to be mm. there and still not know. Mm. To have it and still look for it. You have it already. Jesus, but you're still looking for it. Mm. May God spare you and I from it. In the name of Jesus. It is only Peter that had that insight. He said, you are the Christ. 
You are not just a Pharisee. You are not a Sadducee. You are not just a scribe. You are not just a pastor. You are my God's given father. You are the Christ. The son of the living God. Right there Jesus stopped and said. Peter, Peter. Flesh and blood. Did not reveal this to you. But my heavenly father. Hear me. This woman. Perceive that the man who passed by the city and received some bread from her hand was not an ordinary man. And she began the process of dealing with the man as per the revelation. Because you see, your approach to things speaks of the insight you have of it. See, so you come to church eating and drinking and sitting down. You know, because your revelation of the place mm -hmm. is in that level. If the sense of sacred that you ought to have, you do not get it by revelation. You cannot act in a level expected. That's right. This woman said to the man, the husband, he said, this is a holy man of God. Therefore, things have to be done differently. You cannot know that this is my man of God and you go with things naturally. No. Then you do not know. She said, let us put up an investment to house what he carries that passes by our yard. Let us invest on what we perceived so that there may be a monument in our homes, in our bloodline, in our family over what he carries. Let us house his anointing. He was passing by. It was on the first time this woman did good. But this time, by revelation, she said, mm -mm. It cannot just come and go. Let us do something that will house it. The anointing you have not housed cannot be permanent in your life. Jesus. You got to house it. So that when on building an upper room, and the Bible said they put some nice items there. It is listed that they put a table, they put a lamp, they put a chair, and they put a bed. Enough for the man of God to be comfortable. The man of God had to be comfortable. The last time I really had an encounter and spent time with my mother, Joanna Verno, who is in glory. Before she traveled, she was with me. And I remember she was already going to the airport and we were rushing to go to see her. I would normally go with her to the airport and push her or hold her, whatever the case could be. Because sometimes we'll push her, we will let her in, or sometimes I will have to have her. I will put her bag on my side, making sure that she's comfortable. That day, she was going to the airport and the only place I could meet her as we were rushing, thank God for the also, was right in front of the apartment where she stayed. She was already in the car. I opened the car and I sat on the, the, where you put your feet. I sat there. She began to speak. You know, she would speak and repeat herself. She was old. She blessed me. She kissed me. She blessed me again. She thanked me. She said, because of you, my smile is here. He said, you make my life sweet. She said, I do not call you just pastor. He calls me fiston, meaning my son. Three daughters never had a biological son. Say, you my son. She kissed me, I think, 20 times. And she blessed me. And she thanked me. She mentioned things. Thank you for the restaurant. Thank you for going with me. 
Thank you for doing this. Oh, thank that man on my behalf. Do I did not know that that was the last time I would really encounter my mother. Because thereafter, I heard she left us. We spoke on the phone, but then she left us. We went there to see her remains. I keep this in my mind. You went all out to make me comfortable. She said repeatedly. Say, every time you will do such, all I will say is if your spiritual father can see, this woman, the Shunammite woman, made sure that the man of God was comfortable. I had only one spiritual father. My assignment was on one. His assignment was on many of us. Your assignment is on one. His assignment is on many. Spiritual things can only be understood by spiritual people. And once they get it, they begin to expand. They begin to go places. Men and women look at them and say, what is it that you do extra? We are all children of God. We are all Christian. We all go to church. Why is it that your case is different? No, you have tapped into different revelations. You have been taught well. You understand the word. Glory to Jesus. The house, the anointing. And because she did what she did so well, the man of God, in the inside of him, knew that uh, she provoked heaven. Do you know you provoke heaven? My God. Did you know that? Many, according to what is reported in the scriptures, are seen to have provoked heaven. Solomon's offering, Provoked heaven. He was not a prophet, but that night God appeared to him and said, Ask anything you want because of his offering. Not because he prayed a lot, he provoked heaven. So Elisha called his servant, said, Call the woman, and the woman came and said, What is it that you want me to do for you? After you have done so much, you cannot expect nothing. Nobody can ever outgive God, no matter how hard you try. See, you have given. What is it that you expect in return? He proposed. Do you want me to speak to the king for you? Or do you want me to speak to the commander of the army for you? The woman turned down the offer because her motive was not a trade. She did it with a pure heart. She did it to honor the anointing. She did not do it for a position. It was not a scheme of networking. She was pure. She said, no. I'm a simple woman who lives among my people. She left. But the man of God was unsatisfied. There are certain things. Once you have done it. Even if you do not ask anything in return. Heaven will hunt you down to get something from you. Save it. The woman already turned down the offer. But the man of God called Gehazi's servant and said, Go, search, investigate. Bring me something that needs to be done to this woman. Gehazi went checking and came back with a report. Everything is fine in this house, but there is no child. As soon as the man of God heard that, he said, call the woman. And he called the woman. And as a woman came, a word has been released. Next year, by this time, yes. you will have a child. When a prophet speaks, when God speaks to his servant, is it just to motivate us? God works through words. That's right. Through the words of his servant, he works. 
By this time next year, you will have a child. So it happened that she had a child. But as every miracle that you get, you got to contain it. You got to keep it. You got to maintain it. The child began to grow. And it so happened that the child one day became sick and the child died. Now to me, reading the scriptures, I believe the child was already of a certain age. How do I know that? Elijah could lay on the child, eye on eye, hands on hands. It means that the child had a certain height. It also means that the house built for Elijah was not for one year. That's right. The woman did not change his mind and say, well, we kept you for one year, but now our uncle is coming. There are people who are like this. Yes, yes. The reason why they cannot go forward mm. is because even when they labored for something, they turn to about their own miracle. That's right. You got to be consistent. Mm. Mm. So the house was available to Elisha all that while. The child growing, that place was still there. You start, don't stop. Mm -hmm. Carry on. That's right. And the blessings of God will keep on flowing it. in your life. I receive it. The child became sick. The father sent the child to the mother. And the mother kept the child until noon and the child died. How can something that God has given you die? Hear me. I've seen my father, my, my, my own father. I've seen him very high. You know what it means to watch TV and your father is there? Watch the news and his opinion matters. Mm. And just good. And I've seen my father lose everything. I remember the day a small micro bus or mini bus van came in the house with drivers. Each one of them took a car in the house. It is only then that I realized that they were not our cars. But you see, we use them at will. We kept them for such a long time that I thought it, they were our cars. The yard we are living in was literally six yards combined from this street to this street to the other street. So we had three streets. It was like a complex, one house. Those days, young. We had soldiers at the gate, armed soldiers. One day, they all left. We gotta go. Where? No, we gotta go. My father suffered depression after that in the highest level. His enemies were all over him. People he employed turned against him. This is a horrible story. We had to keep an eye on dad to keep him alive because he wanted to kill himself. You know how it feels? Check on your dad. If he's sleeping, you check him if he's still breathing. Seeing your father. My father used to wear suits. I remember the, those days, he would wear what is, the brand is Azoni. And in his car, he would listen to Julio. <laughs> and he would sing along. He would travel the world. And now, he had to wait for taxi. Not Uber. Do you understand this? Jesus. 
I'm trying to say, even when God gives you, you must be able to keep. Yes. Better never had. Then you have tested it and now you do not have it. You know caviar? Better not know those things. <laughs> the child died. Thank God that the man of God was still dead. When your altar is a stable, no matter what you go through, you will come out victorious. I receive it. Jehovah is on your side. The guarantee that keeps you moving Jesus. is your altar. It's not life. It's not your friends. That's right. All those things fluctuates. Your God. A great man that we know used to be a general, very important man. He had his fear of challenges as anybody, mistakes. This is a true story. This man had a lot, very wealthy man. Now I say that thing with Bishop Celeste on the rise. When I say this man is wealthy, I mean he's wealthy. I don't mean that he has a car. This man decided for some reason, no judgment, move out of the house, got into another house with another person. Life moved on, but he was still managing the two. A great man, man of power, man highly lifted. And it so happened that he had a, a, almost a mini stroke. So one stroke is coming, he got you, but you think that uh, <laughs> you got out of it. <laughs> so he got a stroke, but a mini stroke. He can still move, but uh, he could feel like a hey. Now, when he went to house himself in a new house, the madam of the house had to see the mini stroke and say, hey, whatever you have here, our children here are young. Transfer it quickly. To keep it because that stroke that came, if it comes again, what will be of your children, not me? Me, I can fend for myself. Your children pointing the last one, and the last one is crying, Daddy. You see, learn to rebuke things once. That's right. Please, do you hear me? If you don't rebuke and resist certain things once, it comes again. When it comes again, it's no longer a shock in your system. That's it becomes right. acceptable. Mm, mm. Sure. Someone who insults your mother the first time, you are shocked, but you don't rebuke it. He, he. <laughs> Tomorrow, when the insult comes again, it's no longer the same level of shock. Meaning, you start accommodating it. Probably, the general, when they told him, sign the document, because stroke may come again, he was probably shocked. Hey. But I understand. He did not have the strength. He allowed tomorrow, the day after. Some people, they will get you sign document, even with another hand you cannot <laughs> he signed the document long story short the man is still here in fact he got the second stroke situation is not nice the person who's supposed to find for for him who receive everything say look we, it's not working from the onset i did you wrong I will apologize to you and your wife and the family. I apologize, bring my thing. No, 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 no. That's not for me. That's for the younger one. 
This man is out there. He lost everything. Jesus. It's just like that. Children are saying, Dad, you see, you didn't treat us fairly. I'm trying to tell you this. The Bible said, let he who stand take heed lest he falls. Jesus. If you are low, don't stay there. Go high. If you are high, don't fall back. Keep on moving higher. But how do you do that? Your God. Somebody say, my altar, my life. My altar, my life. Glory to I decree, Jesus. I declare, you will not fall. I receive it. You will keep on going higher in and higher. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The child died. If the prophet was not in good turn with this woman, what would have happened? Don't burn bridges. Yes. It has never been wise. Not in the world, not in God. The prophet was still there. We thank God. She could still go and call the prophet. We thank God. Life is dynamic. You must know how to navigate things. Are you hearing that? Yes, Pastor. Went to the man of God. For a miracle, Bishop Celeste put it well. See, she had a choice to bury the child, to call for a funeral, and uh, invite everybody. Cried on everybody's ears. No, she did not. She said, I'm going to my man of God. I'm going to where it came from. Yes. See, only the anointing that birthed it can sustain it. I believe. Only the anointing that birthed it can sustain mm. it. Now, this all I say, if somebody had asked me, what is the theme of your message? I will say, Fight until you have it. Glory to Jesus. We have exhausted our time, but I want to say this. This woman who lost the child refused to bury the child, but decided to fight until a story changed. Any story can change. I believe. Do you hear that? I say again. Any story can change. Amen. If you set your mind to seek God for it, you will have a different result. Any marriage can work. Any disease can be healed. Hallelujah. Any blockade can open up. Amen. Any battle can be won. You can win if you understand. God will never allow your back to be against the world. I receive it. God will never forsake you in the pit alone. I receive it. There is nothing that is impossible mm. to God and to those who believe. You see, the problem is that we give up too quickly. We, we, we just give up. You give up on yourself. You give up on your church. You give up on your altar. You give up on your dreams. But I just want to encourage you fight until you receive it. I want everybody to stand and I want to say these six things that this woman did while you stand so I may not go too far. If you want to fight to have as this woman thought that the child may come back to life 
I propose the six important things. And that these, ladies and gentlemen, comes with the mind that in life, you have to learn to fight to get what you want. That's right. Good things of life will never be presented to you in the silver platter. When you see somebody in a certain level of life, before you begin to envy that person, you must know that there has been a fight to acquire and to sustain what you see. That's right. Nothing is given just easy. Those who still walk together, do not walk together because they had uh, no opportunity of uh, moving away from each other. They have just decided we will fight to remain together no matter what. Glory to Jesus. Greatness does not manifest because you wish it shall manifest. Greatness manifests because you fought for it to manifest. Am I trying to tell you that life is a fight? Yes, yes life is a fight. Yes. Am I trying to say that, well, everything that you get in God comes with a fight? Here it is. The grace of God gives it to you, but you taking it requires you to push yourself to fight for it. That's right. By straps we are healed. Divine health is our portion. Mm. But the eating right is your duty. The exercising yes. every day is your duty. Yes. Are you hearing me? Lord, you promised that he shall be mine. Go and comb your hair then. Oh, yes. Six important things that you got to do if you want to receive what is yours. If you want to fight until it becomes yours one, you must perceive it. What you have not perceived, you can never receive. That's right. You can only receive it as you perceive it. You must become aware of it. And the only way for you to become aware of it is through what I call a spiritual insight. You see, this woman knew that there is a possibility for this child to come back. Because before the child was even manifested, there is a man that spoke the child to be. So if I go to the same man that spoke the child My to me, goodness. this same man will find it easy this time to bring him back to speak, to see, to stand, to walk. Perception. Yes. If you can perceive it, you can receive it. What do you see? If you will tell me what you see, I will tell you what you will have. When you lift up your eyes, what do you see? Oh, well, you see nothing. You go nowhere. That's right. Your vision is key. I see myself building that company. I see myself creating employment. I see myself doing what others have not done, but that will bless them. What do you see? If you can see it, you can have it. Two, believe it. If you're gonna fight, until you have it, you must know it by seeing it, mm. by perceiving it, and by believing. You see, you cannot really put up a fight if you do not, on the onset, believe in it. You will not. That's right. They tell you, well, 
you you can become the king of a kingdom called, already now you're lost you're not believing it already <laughs> The kingdom call Bafua Bafua. <laughs> I tell you, no matter who pushes you, you don't believe in the story, <laughs> you will not fight for it. Yeah, that's right. If you believe this is mine, they have turned you down, you say you do not know. You will catch it later on. This is mine. You must believe it. Amen. Believe who you are. Yes. Believe what God said. Believe the promises of God in I your life. Believe that you are not common. I Can I say it, it again? Yes. You are not common. I receive it. You buff it. Life doesn't buff itself like that. You buff it. It comes from you. So you perceive it and you believe it. You believe. You believe. You accept it as true. Mm. My child will not bear it. How? Jesus. God knows my child will come back to life. I see six zero. Mm -hmm. Added on the number I you have in your bank account. I receive it. Mm. If you had only ten rand. I Six zero plus the ten rand, you have ten million rand. Some of you, instead of believing what I'm saying, you're shocked by it. Huh? You are seeing it. <laughs> Hear me. You cannot live right if you believe wrong. That's right. It is said, whether you think you can or you cannot, either way, you are right. If you think that you can, I'll pay my rent. I'll pay my rent. I'll pay my rent. God say, do not think I'll pay my rent. I don't want you to be a tenant. I want you to be a landlord. I want you to be a developer. Yes. But your greatest miracle is when somebody blesses you after church. Hey, things are happening under the anointing of my spiritual father. Somebody gave me 50. I pray for six zero to I be added. It. That 50 with six it. zero may become 50 million. It. If you receive it loud enough, it's yours. I receive it. I say, if you receive it loud enough, it's yours. I receive it. Oh, I sense that God is doing it for you. Yes, if you receive it loud receive enough, it. it's yours. I receive it. I have it. If, if you believe certain things can be done, it shall be done. You men, as you men, I'm speaking on the microphone, is a stick. You can hear me. Someone believe this can be. There are people watching me on Zoom, thousands from across the globe. The reason why you're watching me is because somebody believed that, that this magic can be a reality. That's right. Hallelujah. The commercialized magic. If you will bring your grandfather who died and tell him that, uh, told him that uh, you are watching me on Zoom. Then he, he will ask you, in my family we serve God. <laughs> I'm trying to get you to believe. God who placed that dream in you. If you will fight for it, you will have it. I receive it. May you own the city in the name of Jesus. I receive it. I said, may you own the city in the name of Jesus. I receive it. I said, may you own the city in the name of Jesus. I receive it. May closed womb carry Jesus. triplets in the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. Look I at your hands. Seven. Hear me. 
Keep looking at your hands. Through your hands, God is about to do things that generation before you have not seen. I receive it. Your hands will produce. I receive. Right now, I pray that the oil of God may come on you. May the oil of God be seen right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. I receive it. In Jesus' name. The third thing to do if you want to fight until you have it is you must be determined. If you find somebody who's determined, you find a fighter. Amen. Yes. Amen. There are many wars around the world. Some are popular. Some are not popular. Mm. But I'm telling you, in every war, whoever is still there fighting is determined. Yes. If they give you a gun, you are not determined. You step in the battlefield. You hear gunshot. You change your mind. <laughs> as soon as you go there, you just hear, pause. Mm. God called me for other things. <laughs> Obstacles will be there. That's right. You want to be a pastor? God is showing you 1,000 people. Mm. And you are standing up, only two people showing up. You're asking them, where are your brothers? Somebody say, I will not give up. I will not give up. Often time we give up just before the breakthrough. You say, no, I've been in this thing for too long now. Six months, six years. Don't give up. Amen. You are closer now I than you have ever been. It. Don't give up. Amen. Bishop Celeste says, there is only one plan. It's called plan God. There is no plan B. Glory to Jesus. You are going in already with plan B. Your wedding day, you're asking, no, no, when this thing doesn't work, <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> it will work in the name of Jesus. I receive it. I say it shall work in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. There is only plan God. God. You know what plan is it? Wow. Plan God. You are in plan I God. Receive That's it. why those who are trying to get you out of the way do not know. They do not understand. You did not just went on a yellow page and found that opportunity and went for it. No. It's more than that. You are in it. Your heart is in it. Your lungs are in it. Your intestines are in it. Your pancreas are in it. Your skin and bones are in it. The devil like it or not. I am in it. You will receive it. I receive it. In Jesus name. One of my daughters, 52 years old. They had a baby shower. You know baby shower? 52 years old. Glory to Jesus. Tired. You know tired? Oh God. Very tired. <laughs> 52 years old. Great God. I am a winner. Yes. This is who we are. We yes. don't just give up. Yes. We don't just give up. Yes. I say we don't just give up. We don't give up. Fourth, you gotta learn to speak it. You speak wrong, you can't get right. This woman was. Met by the servant of the man of God who asked, Is there anything the matter? She said, No, it is well. What you say affects who you are. That's right. What you say, you must learn to speak high if you want to go high. 
speaking high is prophetically declaring your way up. I am good. I am up. I am not down. How are you, brother? I'm hooked. Oh, yes. I am blessed. Amen. How are you? Hey, I'm so so. If you want to go so so, keep on saying so so. Before long, you become so so. We see you. We see so so. Somebody say, I am blessed. I am blessed. God does not want you to be a prophet of your pain. Speaking about what you are crying about. I'm sick. And you say that sometimes because you, you try to get some pity or draw attention or excuse the, the, the weakness you may have. You know, today I'm not really feeling well. So people may know the expectation should be managed. Be careful. Yes. Even in a joke, never say you low. Yes. Even under greatest attacks of the enemy. That's right. Do not allow the enemy to bully you that much. Mm -mm. Where you accept his narrative. Don't. Yes. It is godly to speak God's plan in your life. That's right. My children are blessed. Amen. Everything about you must be high. I will save it. The Lord is on my side. Mm, mm. I am good. Amen. Oh, in a joke. You know, me, one day, because these days things are tough. Look at what. Even in a joke. In the spiritual realm, there is no joke. That's right. Joke doesn't exist. Amen. Every word you say, Come. even when you repeat it, mm -hmm. out there, in the spiritual realm, it comes with your name on it. That's why I keep on telling you, a prophet does not joke. Whatever it does, even if seemingly it was a joke, mm -hmm. there is a message in that. That's right. I stopped one of my daughter one day. She was laughing and I perceived, I, I, I perceived that it was not the first time. She keep on saying that, you are killing me. <laughs> I'm dead, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> For her, it's no more. She is unaware. The Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Anything that uh, makes her laugh, it's killing her. This song like, killing me softly. Don't sing it. Don't sing it. <laughs> You're in good mood and you, 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 you put the atmosphere well. Instead of glorifying God, look at you. Killing me softly. <laughs> I thank God for IVP. I'll deal with that, but stop doing that next time. My father. Lift your hands and say, I am God's greatest investment i am god's greatest investment say i am blessed in the city i am blessed in the i city. am blessed in the field i am blessed in the field say i will make it big i will make it big in jesus name in jesus name now every day say that every yes. day every single day yes. keep on speaking it yes. i am well I, I, I have a knee problem. No, you don't have the knee problem. Mm -mm. You don't. Don't speak your reality. Because mm -mm. faith does not deny reality. Faith transforms reality. How do you Hallelujah. do that? By speaking word of God. You keep on speaking, I have a knee problem. Say it three times. You start pulling your leg. Because you said it so much. That now it becomes a reality. This is what the Bible says. Let the weak say. I am strong. Oh, he's weak already. Why didn't he say, let the weak say, I'm weak. It's a reality. Let the weak say, I'm weak. Because he's weak. 
Because the sick want to say he's sick. The broken want to say I'm broken. The weak should not say what he's going through. The weak should say what God has done for him. Hallelujah. Let the weak say. Strong. Let the poor say. I am rich. Hallelujah. Now, if, if, if here, just by mistake, somebody say, I want to give 100 rand to, to a poor person here. Don't take that 100 rand. If I ask her, who is poor here? Even if you didn't eat for two days, you are rich. Oh, yes. I believe. You will see it come to pass. I receive it. The fifth thing that you got to do if you want to fight to win, to fight to see it, just like this woman, you got to be disciplined. Mm. Look, the easiest thing in life is to see other people and think that, uh, oh, well, they got it just like that. No, it is in his genes. I used to have six packs. Now I have one pack. I, I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> Where are you coming from? <laughs> Now you look at somebody else is coming. Oh, I thank God for winter. I'll cover myself. But summer. You just asking yourself, oh Lord, I am a wind. Just giving an example. Discipline is you doing what you do not like so you may produce what you like. Oh, help us, Lord. You have to discipline yourself. Hear me. The best way for you to be a disciplined person, you need to create boundaries or blocks. Mm -hmm. You must know eating time is eating time. Don't bring eating time everywhere. Yes. Laughing time is laughing time. There must be a time you are serious. Yes. You cannot come to church with the mind of you being at home, the mother of Jesus, Mary, and the brothers came to Jesus. He was teaching. People came to Jesus and said, your mother and your siblings are calling for you. He said, who is my mother? He denied them. <laughs> Mary was shocked. What? He said, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? He pointed those who were around. He said, these ones yes. who do the will of my father. Because there must be blocks. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Boyfriend, girlfriend cannot enter into business. So you will go broke. <laughs> You're mixing too many things. You must discipline yourself. When I pray, I'm praying. It is that time. Don't mix. You and I are talking soccer. How is it that you start talking to my pastor? Brother. How? We are talking about soccer. He missed the goal. Now you're talking about my man of God. Ah. You destroyed it. We cannot carry on. We cannot talk about my altar the same way we talk about soccer. Impossible. No. That's right. Draw the line. We cannot jungle everything in the same basket. No. Mm -hmm. We need to know the lines. That's right. we good business partner. We keep it there. Yes. Don't ask me who did you vote. <laughs> Last. If you want to fight until you have it, this is critical. Mm. Pay the price for it. Yes. If you are not willing to pay the price for it, you cannot have it. You may wish to have it, you cannot have it. Mm. Those who have, have paid the price for it. Hear me, this is fundamental. For every price, there is a price. Mm -hmm. You pray for five minutes. 
You come out of there, you feel powerful. You change your walk. You know what? You are bidon. You know bidon? Nothing. You want to pass with distinction. But the only part of your books you know is the cover. That's the only part. You just know the cover. You know the yellow book. That's the yellow and blue. How will it be? You must learn to pay the price. There is a cost. This woman decided to go to the man of God. She was busy when the issue happened. She left everything. The Bible says she asked the husband to send a young man and one of the donkeys. They settled the donkey. She had to be on the donkey. And she said to the young man, speed. Go for it. She went to pay the price. And when she got there, she, she fought by kneeling down and holding the man of God's feet. It all goes with what price are you willing to pay? Do you know that some people literally wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning? Others 4 o'clock in the morning. Others 10 o'clock in the morning. Hmm? Good morning. <laughs> you know that? Do you know that there are people who, for what you see, they, they work. You, you want their cars. You also want to have the white car. You're imagining yourself in that white car. You see him passing the white car. You, you edit him. And you edit yourself in. It's because you do not know. There is a price. Oh, Jesus. Are you hearing me? Yes. On your knees. There is a price. I say if, as a servant of God, you cannot pray for one hour, you should resign. Someone found it very, very extreme. Really? I say, brother, you should not resign. You should leave. <laughs> he has his own church. I say, leave the church. Leave the building of the church. <laughs> Retire. <laughs> a life of convenience yeah. is a life of no progress. If you want to leave, like a king, accept to work like a slave. Jesus, help us. I thank God, Amen. You work. As I look at you here, and even those of you online, you put work. That's why you will have it I in Jesus' name. That. If you were blessed by this video, kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel, Pastor Elf Lucar.